Hey everybody, what's going on? Hexlex here, got another Master Duel video for you. So surprise, surprise, we are on yet another 60 card Shizu deck. Uh, as I've mentioned, you know, a lot before, I definitely just cannot get enough of making these decks. I love pile decks, blah, 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 you've heard it all by this point, I'm sure. Uh, so this was definitely one of those, like, um, I wanted to see if I could do it more than I necessarily thought it was a good idea, but I didn't think it was a terrible idea either. And that was making a 60 card Shizu variant of Branded Despia. So uh, one of my main motivations for wanting to try this particular variant of, uh, well, I guess you could say this variant of Branded Despia or this variant of a Shizu, but um, I still kind of wanted to play some kind of an Ashizu deck where we were running Herald of the Orange Light. Because, you know, in theory, uh, this card is actually insane with the Ashizus being a basically a Cypher and Gamma uh, that's also going to proc one of your Millers and or put a Shuffler in your graveyard. So, for obvious reasons, that's very, very good. Um, the real reason I haven't been playing Herald of the Orange Light more often is just because I haven't really been playing, I think with the exception of the Ashizu Pile, that might have been playing Orange Heralds. That, that was actually, I know that was playing Orange Heralds, but uh, otherwise, like, I really just have not... I've been playing any other Ashizu pile decks that actually want to play other fairy type monsters, and I don't think the Ashizus by themselves in a 60 card deck are enough to play the Orange Heralds. In in my testing with that for Adam Emancipator, uh, even though we were maxing out on all, um, what is it, six, nine copies of Ashizu cards available, uh, that's that's not enough uh, in my experience with 60 cards. Uh, I found that when I was testing the Orange Heralds in Adam Emancipator, so. Uh, I wanted to play an Ishizu deck that actually had more fairies in it, uh, that could actually make use of Orange Herald, was honestly, like I said, my main motivation for coming to this deck in particular. So, yeah, I was looking for, like, good fairy-type monsters, and I was like, oh yeah, the Despias are, like, all fairies. Uh, Dramaturge, Ad Libidum, Aluber, Tragedy, Comedy, yep, they're all fairy-type monsters. So, I figured this was the best build to, or one of the best decks to slot in the Ashizus and Orange Heralds. And grasses and all that stuff, and of course the uh, main motivation for milling in this deck would be would be to hit something like Despian Tragedy to get the search, or just to generally set up stuff in your graveyard um, for like I don't know a branded in red, maybe a Despia Theater of the branded. Uh, I know this fuse is from like you know hand in the field, but of course we still like having stuff set up in the graveyard for it as well. So, let's see here. Well, I guess to be fair, that's honestly setting up the level 8 fusion monster in the graveyard. Alibur brings itself back off its own effect. I always get that mixed up. Um, but in any case, um, yeah, we also like to have, um, you know, sometimes we actually do like to have our branded fusion milled. If we mill a Despian Tragedy as well, we could opt to not activate the Tragedy's effect and then just set the branded fusion directly from our graveyard. Springin's Kit can also get stuff back from the graveyard as well as the... Um, or Banished as well, uh, as well as stuff from our deck, so uh, it's not like we're necessarily like, you know, there is like the reasonable fear that maybe we mill out like our Branded Fusions and stuff. Another way we have to recover it though in that case is actually Branded Retribution, which also likes being in the graveyard that will allow us to uh, add that back. And even if we don't mill the Retribution itself, we can always mill Albion the Shrouded Dragon and then we can use that to mill the Retribution directly from our deck. Honestly, one of the main reasons to like, go up to 60 cards as a Branded Despia deck is really just to play all the different like Branded Despia cards that like the deck can reasonably uh, play. Uh, there's a lot of Albaz support out there, as I'm sure you all know, and it's really hard to fit all the support you might want to play in a 40 card deck. Uh, but in a 60 card deck, you know, we have room for like 2 kit, we have room for Albion and Retribution. Retribution is also, of course, not a bad card to set in its own right as well. We have room for a comedy, as well as like uh, the Dramaturge as well. This is like the, the one off theater, the Branded Lost, and the uh, Mercurier are here as well. Uh, again, all the stuff that we typically don't have the room to play in a 40 card variant, we can jam just jam it all in here in a 60 card variant. But. At the end of the day, it's not really going to change too drastically, or even drastically at all, how this deck is played. Uh, it's still the same Despia strategy of uh, get Mirror Jade, and ideally also a, a Dragor Stapelia and or maybe Masquerade alongside it. Uh, and then just use that as well as your overwhelming card advantage to make sure your opponent is just kind of locked out of the duel, more or less. Not through any actual like floodgate or anything, but just through like... 
you know, of course, Mirror Jade banishing, Brandon and Redford guarding Chimera to follow up with another Mirror Jade banish, so on and so forth, the Dragos Sapelli in the gate, Taxman Taxes, you know, we've all played against this deck before, so. Let's see here. Um, oh, is another light monster. We, of course, have Fairy Tail Snow. This card is good even in the 40 card variant, so we're naturally going to play it in the 60 card grass variant. We're rocking into Biru as another potential light monster for Albion. And if you don't have either of those, we, of course, have the uh, three orange heralds that you can use as well. Uh, those are going to be our only light monsters, but it's all we really need, uh, as you only really need a few light monsters in order to make the Albion live. Uh, that's also for, like, mainly turn one plays. If you're following up on, like, turn three, for example, with a kill, you can usually just have a Lubellion. Uh, well, not, I don't know about usually, but you can potentially have a Lubellion for a late target as well. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, there's not really a whole lot else to say about this deck. This is actually, in a way, like, the least unique Shizu deck, if that makes any sense. Like, you know, stuff like Zombies and Ad Emancipator, you could definitely feel how the impact of how playing the Shizu cards uh, changed up your play style, but with Brain of Despia, I mean, like I said, we're just really sticking to the same plan of, uh, of running out Mirror Jade and Guardian Chimera. It's just that the Ashizu Millers, like, might occasionally make that a little bit easier. Um, if I had Shadal stuff, I would definitely be rocking that in the sec as well. There's actually a lot of Ashizu variants I still want to try that I would need to craft stuff before, for, and I know, I know, I have, I have enough craft materials, etc, etc, but, um, i really just concerned about, like, Crafting all these different stuff, spending like half my UR points just to play, make like two or three more Shizu piles, and then some sort of ban is going to invalidate all of them, and then I'll have wasted my UR craft points. So, um, definitely still looking to save for stuff like tier limits, bestials, Varner selfs, etc., etc. So, I don't know. This is the last Shizu, unique Shizu variant that I have planned to show. Um, to even to make the Necroface Mill, which I might throw together. I'd still need to craft like two diviners and at least one more fairy tale snow. We'll see. We'll see. If there's a lot of people really clamoring for it, I might do that. At the same time, I do also acknowledge that I've been pretty much exclusively making a Shizu decks for now, like the last week and a half here on the channel, and I could definitely understand if a lot of you want to see something else. So feel free to let me know in the comments, um, and I guess we'll just see how the. I was going to say the rest of the month, but realistically the rest of the time until the next selection pack goes, which will likely have tier limits, but we'll, we'll have to see how it all plays out. Anyway, let's go ahead and break this list down, card by card, as we always do, and then we'll look at some games. So we're on 1 Despian Comedy, 3 Despian Tragedy, 3 Herald of the Orange Light, 3 Max C, 3 Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring, 3 Edge of Chain, 1 Fairy Tail Snow, 3 Fallen of Albaz, 2 Alibur, the Gesture of Despia, one Tri-Brigade Mercurier, two Spriggan's Kit, two Kaldo the Sacred Protector, three Mudor the Sword Oracle, two Kelbeck the Ancient Vanguard, one Algido the Ancient Sentinel, one Dramaturge of Despia, one Albion the Shrouded Dragon, one Ad Libidum of Despia, one Nibiru the Primal Being, two Polymerization, one Foolish Burial, two That Grass Looks Greener, two Fright for Patchwork, three Branded Fusion, one Despia Theater of the Branded, one Branded Lost, two Super Poly, two Call by the Grave, two Branded Opening, why is this card still at two? That's really weird to me. Two Branded in Red, one Branded Banishment, and then finally one Branded Retribution. It's gonna do it for the main deck. For the extra deck, we're on one Mud Dragon the Swamp. I didn't talk about this during the profile, but I should have. I really actually like this as a Super Poly target. In the previous Sprite meta, I probably should have just been on the at Ignister G Golem, which is a Cyberus plus a Link monster. In this meta, with the Shizus though, I do think the Mud Dragon is better, um, because it hits a lot more variety of stuff. Uh, anyway, we're playing one of that, one Starving Venom Fusion Dragon as our other main Super Poly target, one Predaplant Dragos Sepelia, two Albion the Braided Dragon, one Despian Coratus, two Masquerade the Blazing Dragon, two Mirror Jade the Ice Blade Dragon, two Lubelian the Searing Dragon, one Alba Lenatus the Abyss Dragon, and then finally two Guardian Chimera. And that's going to round out our list. Now let's take a look at some gameplay. Alright, so for our first duel, we're going to be up against Labyrinth. Um, it was interesting. They were actually attacking the Dark Barrier Statue. I say that's interesting because the Dark Barrier Statue is pretty widely regarded as the worst one. Of course, Dark being the attribute that's most apt to special summon a lot, but. In this meta, where there's a lot of like variety of attributes in the Ashizu piles, I can really see it. So we're going to start here with our branded opening, uh, pitching the Edge Imp Chain in order to get the search there. 
technically might have been a misplay to special this, because there might be a world where I needed to just normal summon it, but not on turn one, I don't think, I don't know. On turn two, it can matter a little bit more, but on turn one, whether you use special or add the Alibur, uh, I don't think it matters too, too much, so. Anyway, going for the Branded Fusion, of course, here. Gonna drop the Lubellion. Uh, Lubellion, I'm definitely gonna look to discard the Fairy Tail Snow to make that live in my graveyard, just in case it's needed. And then, of course, Despian Tragedy is going to search the Ad Libidum. And since we have the extra poly, that means we get to set up a Dragostapelia in addition to our Mirror Jade. This is all very standard turn one um, Branded Despia stuff. Like I said, uh, in a lot of ways, the uh, deck hasn't really changed at all, despite being 60 cards and now a Grass of Shizu deck. Yeah, even look at our graveyard here. We re didn't even really touch into that engine at all. So in a way, this might be one of the least necessary, like, additions of a Shizu to a deck, but at the same time, I still think it's interesting the ability to play Orange Herald as a Disrupt it was, again, one of the large appeals for this deck for me, as well as having access to the Shufflers as Disruption, too. So I'm just going to throw out Maxi during my opponent's draw phase. Of course, now we know that they're on um, the uh, Labyrinth plan, so we know that it's probably not going to affect them too much, but uh, it looks like they were on evenly matched either way, so we're just going to move to battle phase and end of battle phase to activate evenly matched. The cool thing about Branded Despia, this card, or this deck rather, can actually play around evenly matched better than most decks can, and I'll show you how here. So. Here they have evenly matched. If they ever drop evenly matched against a board like this, we have like Dragostapelia, the Mirror Jade, and the Branded in Red set. Here's what you do: you flip up the Branded in Red, right? We're gonna use that to add back our Ad Libitum of Despia. We'd be doing this anyway if we wanted to go for Guardian Chimera, but we're not gonna make Guardian Chimera here. It actually doesn't really matter what we make here. And Ooh, excuse me, sorry about that. And had I known I was against Labyrinth, I would have actually made like a Despian Coratus here, but. I also decided to make a Masquerade instead. Maybe I should have made a Karatis. Would that actually... I wonder if Karatis' effect to summon an Albaz or a card that mentions it would have triggered off of being banished here. Um, but in any case, we're going to keep the Dragos Sapelia because I want this monster in the gate. So, uh, what we get to do now on a separate chain link is activate the effect of Ad Libidum of Despia to bring back our Mirror Jade. And so that's how you can play around evenly matched with this deck. I think I've shown this on the channel once before, but it never hurts to show it again. Uh, this deck, like I said, is this unique way to play around evenly matched to make sure that it doesn't hit too much of our board. Uh, in this case, all it really hit was it forced us to use our Branded in red. Um, but we have a live Mirror Jade now as well as our Drago Sepelia. So, the evenly matched was really a one for one for our back row there, which is definitely, of course, not ideal for our opponent. So, uh, the replay went through that a little bit quickly, but in in-game this was actually a pretty... Uh, not a significant decision, but one that took more than a moment to decide. When my opponent summoned Absolute King Backshack, I really debated if I wanted to stop it or not with the Mirror Jade. Uh, Mirror Jade, of course, isn't negate, but, um, you know, I don't want my opponent to link this away from Link 1 Monster and then get to, uh, excavate and then set a card for free, uh, with the Backshack there. So, I did ultimately decide to banish it. Uh, once I saw the Backshack, I'm like, okay, now I know it's Labyrinth, because there's not really any other deck in this meta that plays Backjack, so... Um, yeah, I didn't want them to be able to set up a Welcome Labyrinth to peel it off the top of their deck, so. They do have a Card of Demise and a Dragalier as well, so they are going to actually get to set up a Branded, or not Branded Red Jesus, a Welcome Labyrinth, but looks like they've already got plays for that because they just got the Labyrinth Labyrinth from the deck instead. Discarding the Lovely Lady is a decent sign. Some decks only play one, but I'm guessing it's, it's more likely they're on two, but that is still good to note they have one in the graveyard. Oh, you might have also noticed that for my uh, uh, my Mirror Jade, I didn't send the uh, Albion. I actually sent Alba Linatus instead. Uh, the reason that I did it that way is because I want to make sure I still have an Albion in my extra deck uh, to potentially have plays with during this next turn. And the Alba Linatus can search up the Brain Diffusion, which is what we were probably going to do with the Albion search anyway. So Alba Linatus we're not going to use, and we can just use that to add Brain Diffusion to our hand. Top deck in Orange Herald doesn't have a use now, but I guess it could potentially later in the turn. We'll see. But speaking of Albion, I am going to go for it here. Using Albaz and the Orange Herald for my deck, I'll just run out the Albion and then activate its effect to get another Fusion Summon. Oh, it doesn't have a response. I'll just get out a Masquerade here. 
Now we can add the Alibur. I could keep this in hand to use with Orange Herald, but given that, especially that we're up against Labyrinth, I don't necessarily think I'll need the monster effect negation super badly here. I'm just going to summon the Alibur for the brand that right in case I need this during my opponent's turn, so. Opponent's going to respond with the Dogmatica Punishment on the Masquerade. Uh, I do have the Branded opening, so we're able to stop it that way. Um, but of course, they are going to, as always, Zivir send the Elder Entity to Tiss, which means that we are going to have another monster uh, destruction coming up here. But um, Oh, and then of course, they also get to use the Labyrinth Labyrinth effect as well. At the very least, the Tax Dragon is still taking taxes from them at this rate. But in response, I'm actually just going to use the Branded in red here. Adding back the Albaz, I don't think I had anything else to even add back, did I? Nah, but... Uh, I'm going to use this to make the Guardian Chimera. This Guardian Chimera won't be able to attack directly because it was summoned with Branded in red, but... I do get to, at the very least, blow up their lovely Labyrinth and then get a couple of draws here. This also forces my opponent's last back row of Ghastly Glitch. I don't know why they decided to target Mirror Jade here, because Mirror Jade had already attacked. Maybe they just lost track of what it attacked, but uh, even in the scenario where they did actually... Um, well, we'll just keep going here. I'll show you. So yeah, they're going to get their stuff, and then yeah, we're just going to smack for lethal, but uh, even in the scenario where they did actually target... Oh, no! I would have been 50 points short. I was about to say, like, oh, I would have been fine because I had the Fairy Tail Snow, but no. If they had hit exactly Dragos Tepelia, then I would have actually been 50 points short of winning the duel on this turn. Wow, I didn't even huh, I didn't even realize that. To be fair, I mean, their hand is only the Dragalier, and the, their field is only Labyrinth Labyrinth, so with what we have, they probably wouldn't have been able to come back anyway, but still. opponent did technically, technically misplay enough to um, miss out on another turn there. Even if, again, it probably wouldn't have mattered, but... Yeah, that's a pretty typical uh, Braided Despia game. Uh, you know, turn one, like I said, setting up the Mirror Jade and or Dragostapelia into the Guardian Chimera, following up into a relatively easy OTK, even through a few points of disruption. So there's that duel. Let's go and take a look at the next one. All right, for this game, we're up against some sort of like junk doppel synchron deck, but it, I noticed it's mainly, it, it does feature Braver and the Smoke Grenade and Rod of Silence. So it might just be a Braver Turbo kind of a deck, but who knows? In any case, we get to go first here. We did open Springen's kit, so uh, we're definitely going to be using that here. Putting the Albaz back after we add our Branded Fusion. And then, of course, subsequently activating the Branded Fusion. This hand's looking really, really good, actually. We not only have our typical setup of Mirror Jade on turn one, but uh, we even get to put a Shuffler in the graveyard with the Lubellion discarding Ludora here. And then we have multiple ways to fuse with our opponent's stuff. Uh, to set as Disruption, the Super Poly, and the Branded Banishment. And of course, this line will also get us a Branded and Red set by the end of it as well. So this is kind of the other typical turn one line you do if you don't have the ability to make Dragos Tepelia. You still use Mirror Jade to banish your own thing, set up a, setting up a Branded and Red. And then this will make the Guardian Chimera live, and then we can use the Ad Libitum, and then, you, you know, you know how it goes from here on, so... Who's going to start with a Water Enchantress, so I uh, definitely need to make sure we're taking care of this Adventure line right away. Of course, we don't want our opponent to set up the Omni Negate of the Wandering Griffin Rider. So here I'm going to flip up the Branded in Red uh, in response to the activation of the Fateful Adventure. Uh, like I mentioned before, we're going to go straight for the Guardian Chimera. Opponent's going to get to search their equip spell. I'm going to use the Guardian Chimera effect in response, of course, as well. And I debated whether or not I wanted to use it on the Fateful Adventure or the token itself. I ultimately am going to decide to blow up the token uh, for a couple of reasons. One, uh, they could easily have the Wandering Griffin Rider in hand, and that's really bad for me if they do. Um, and then they also, well, rather, they won't get the equip spell search if I blow it up. Uh, but the other reason, too, is, like, even if they don't have the Griffin Rider in hand, they could pretty easily, uh, likely use the Adventure Token as a material of some kind for a summon, so... Uh, this stops the Omni Negate from being live and also makes it harder for them to establish a board, so... I'm gonna do it this way. Granted, you know, if they search the Griffin Rider off the Fateful Adventure, they can just special it still, uh, to set up a, uh, you know, a material, but... Uh, you know, this way, at the very least, um, they have to spend a card doing that. So they are, in fact, going to, like I said, go for the Faithful Adventure. The card they're spending, though, is a Jet Synchron, so they definitely want that in the graveyard. 
I debated banishing the Griffin Rider as soon as it was summoned, but opted not to. However, when this Junk Synchron is going to get summoned in the follow-up, they don't activate the effect. Uh, I'm definitely going to activate the Mirror Jade here, because of course, my opponent's got a level 3 tuner, a level 7 non-tuner, that equals 10, which is most likely going to be Baron. And I don't want my opponent to establish an Omni Negate, so once again, I'm going to send the Alba Lanatus, and I'm going to banish the... Um, I'm banishing specifically the Wandering Griffin Rider here. Uh, the reason I'm banishing that and not Jet Synchron is that I don't want my opponent to just bring... Or, uh, Junk Synchron, rather, is I don't want my opponent to just bring back Jet Synchron and then go into a level 8 instead of a level 10 with the um, Wandering Griffin Rider. The Wandering Griffin Rider is definitely what enables more plays here, so I'm going to banish that over the Junk Synchron. But it's going to follow up with an e -Tele. I'm just going to go ahead and Ash Blossom this and not even bother with whatever's going to come out. We do still have the Super Poly and the Brain Dead Banishment set up as potential responses, but they might not necessarily even guarantee to be live here. So, after that, my opponent's going to foolish the Strata Synchron, which has an ability to bring itself back from the graveyard. So, I've been waiting to see if my opponent set up any more graveyard shenanigans. Looks like this is going to be as good an opportunity as any to go ahead and fire off the Mudora. Actually, you know what? Now that I'm reading this, I should have waited. For them to actually tribute their Jet Synchron, or I mean their uh, Junk Synchron, I keep saying that, because I think Jet Synchron also, yeah, has the send a card as a cost. So, I actually did fire this Mudora a little bit early, I could have waited them for them to either discard a card for Jet Synchron or tribute the Junk for the Sorta Synchron. As those are both costs, then I could have shuffled back, and it would have cost them, uh, you know, one of their resources, in addition to them just not having their plays, but... Um, it doesn't super duper matter here. Yeah, they're just gonna concede anyway, so um, Yeah, that just goes to show like how valuable the shufflers can be and it's, it might seem like the Millers are the main appeal of the Ishizu engine But the shufflers are really as much of an appeal for their ability to disrupt so many different strategies uh, Namely runic fountain is a big card that can disrupt in this meta as well as of course the various like block dragon or other graveyard cards fairy tale snow Destrudo. That all the Shizu piles are milling, but yeah, even like niche matchups like these, uh, this rather, you see these shufflers uh, have a lot of utility. So very, very good additions to the deck in that regard too. All right, we still have a couple more duels to watch. Let's go and take a look at the next one here. All right, this next game is going to be against a 60 card paleo pile. Um, not running the Shizu stuff. I was actually kind of confused at first because like I saw Swap Frog and my brain was like Swap Frog equals Sprite, and then I saw Lord of the Heavenly Prison next to it, and I was like. Wait, what? And then I realized it was 60 cards, and I was like, wait, what? No, nah, it's a, uh, like I said, it's a 60 card Paleozoic Pile. They're gonna go first, open with three back rows before passing back over to us. Our opening hand is looking fantastic here. Gonna use the Fright for Patchwork to start by adding Polly and the Edge of Chain. And after that, I'm gonna fire off the Polly even before I summon the Springs Kit here for the Masquerade. Uh, that will allow me to get the Dramaturge on board, as well as get a search with this Edge and Chain. But more than anything else, I was really testing to see what kind of responses my opponent had in the back row here. Before I committed to summoning Kit and then going for the Brain Diffusion line. This way I also get to put back this dead Fright for Patchwork with Kit's effect. Uh, another reason I liked doing it this way. So, opponent has had no responses up to this point, so I feel pretty good about just activating Brain Diffusion here. You'll notice I went for Albion instead of Lubellion, and that I specifically sent, excuse me, the Fairy Tale Snow. This was actually very, very intentional uh, as we're going second here. I'm not really concerned about setting up Mirror Jade, especially given that my opponent set three back row and passed. I don't imagine that the monster banishing is going to be super duper relevant this game. And in fact, we know now they're, it's a Paleozoic deck, so it really isn't most of the time, but. Um, yeah, I also set up the Fairy Tail Snow specifically in the graveyard in case I needed just a little bit more damage here. So, but it's got an Ice Dragon's Prison next. Uh, I'm going to definitely chain the Branded in Red uh, to go ahead and counteract that as they targeted my Fawn of Albaz, didn't they? Yeah. For a second, I thought they targeted Edge of Chain, and I was like, wait, what? But no, it was it was Fawn of Albaz. So, I'll use Fawn of Albaz with this Springin's Kit in order to just make myself a Lubellion. I should have actually summoned it in attack mode and not activated the effect now that I think about it, but although I guess I'm not going to get a chance to activate the effect because I'll just fuse with it using the Albion instead, making a Dragos to Pelier here, and then just moving over to the battle phase. Opponent's got their Paleozoic Dynamiscus in response, um, but I'm just going to chain Super Poly here 
which looks a little bit weird. Um, but remember that Dino Biscus does target, and they did already specifically target my Masquerade in this situation. So I'm going to go ahead and fuse the Masquerade with the Dramaturge here in order to just get out another Masquerade. I do miss out on the damage from both, of course, but I don't need it to win here. Uh, as you can see, I definitely have more than enough damage on board already to finish my opponent off. They didn't even let me get the last attack in. <laughs> they conceded beforehand, but yeah, it's going to do it there for that game. It's a very, very quick, simple game there, but um, just want to show a duel where we focus more on a turn two OTK strategy rather than just setting up the Mary Jane. Because I've seen, I've seen other branded Deathspia players that I've played against doing that. Like, it'll be turn two. And they're still going, like, Lubellion into Mirror Jade off the Brain Diffusion. I'm like, wait, why are you not just going for Albion and, like, trying to kill me right now? Um, so, just wanted to make sure that we were showing off multiple lines of play in that regard. We do also still have yet another duel to take a look at. One more. So, let's just go ahead and go straight into it. And our final game for this video is going to be up against Fluanderies. Good old Flo. Alright, let's see what we got here. Looks like we're going to be taking the first turn. And hey, we actually had a game where we opened with grass. Wow. Um, we're going to probably need it because we don't have a whole lot else going on here. I'm going to start with the grass, which, I mean, they've got Nash Blossom. So you can already see how this is going. But for this reason, this was actually a misplay. I definitely should have started by activating Mudora and discarding Kalbeck. And that might have actually probably would have been enough to uh, prompt the Ash Blossom negate from my opponent. Um, so yeah, just, just a slight misplay here. Um, I mean, I say slight, it is actually a pretty big one getting our grass negated when we could have potentially played around that, but not a whole lot we can do about it now. <laughs> we did at least bait out the Ash Blossom. That is actually one thing that I do like about this deck. This hasn't happened to me yet, but if you open grass plus brain diffusion, at the very least you've got like literally the best grass bait in the world, or the best ash bait in the world, right? <laughs> Alright, so I'm gonna use the Medora effect to discard the Kalbeck. Fortunately, we're just we're the luckiest player in the world, and we still build a Despian Tragedy, even though it's only 5 instead of 20. Looking at our opponent's discard, I was actually pretty confused as to what they were on. Um, in hindsight, DD Crow plus Plot of Extravagance might have been plus Book of Moon. Yeah, these three should have been enough to tell me they were on flow, but I just wasn't thinking when I looked at their graveyard, but oh well. Anyway, here, uh, yep, we've got the Alibur for the Brain Confusion, of course. Now we're going to go ahead and fire that off. We did also mill another Mudora uh, off that Kelbeck, but of course, the Shufflers really don't do anything against Flanderies. Flanderies does not need a graveyard. In fact, it actually is detrimental because if we empty their graveyard then they can play D-Shifter again, so... Yeah, Shufflers are actually less than good, or less than, uh... do nothing. They, they do less than nothing. Words, phrases, English is a word language. Anyway, uh, I'm gonna use my Branded Retribution here just to, you know, have the Branded Fusion back in my hand before passing over to our opponent. Well, setting, setting the brand in red and then we'll pass over to our opponent. We've got the Tragedy Engraved and the Ad Libitum in hand, so that's all nice. We can set up the Guardian Chimera into a fresh Mirror Jade here. But it's going to start with Terraforming for the Magnificent Map, following up with a Pot of Duality that's going to reveal an Eaglin. I was going to say not too much, but now that Eaglin's definitely going to be pretty good for them there. So I'm going to activate their map. I'm actually going to use the Brandon Red in response here. I definitely want to stop this map. Map is by far, I think, one of the scariest cards that Flanderies has. So, definitely want to make sure we're getting rid of that. And we're going to do so with the Guardian Chimera. We also want to do this now instead of waiting for the map to activate because uh, Guardian Chimera is going to activate its effect on a separate chain link. So, if we waited for our opponent to activate the map's effect and then chain to Brandon in red, the map effect would resolve before Guardian Chimera got a chance to resolve. Oh, that might have actually been fine here. We could have blown up and then banished the two little birds. Because, yeah, your opponent's going to end up having the, um, the uh, Advent of an Adventure to just search out another map. So, uh, ultimately, that play's not going to really do a whole lot. And they had a Book of Moon, too, for a Mirror Jade. So, it's like, ugh. And, of course, their last card is Rabina. So, they, like, barely had enough to play through all that. But I'm wondering... If I had actually done it the other way, I said I shouldn't have. If I had chained the brands in red to the activation of the effect of the Magnificent Map, then Guardian Chimera could have blown up one of their monsters. And then, well, they still would have had Book of Moon to put down the Mirror Jade. Hmm. 
Yeah, I don't think it would have actually affected things in the grand scheme of things. Like, I don't think it would have changed too much here, but it's definitely something worth considering. But yeah, now now Flo's got all their plays online, including their M pen. The M pen that we might actually be able to get around. It's just gonna really depend. We do have a super poly, but we're not on the um, Titanic clad, which would have been an easy target with the M pen here. So. Unfortunately, Mud Dragon, I don't think it's going to do a whole lot here with Super Poly, because I'm trying to think of what wind non-wing beast they play. Like, even Rise is a wing beast, right? Yeah, Rise is a wing beast. So they really just don't play any non-wing beast, unfortunately. Um, putting back the Shufflers, looks like, but... I'll just use that to put the Albion back in my extra deck, as well as the Grass back in my main deck there. But this is actually another really good use of the Shufflers, too, is the fact that... Um, you can put your extra deck stuff back, which is very relevant in this matchup. Of course, drawing the Budora that our opponent put back on top of our deck. A little bit rough, but not the end of the world. Uh, even though it's going to trigger their map, I am still going to start by normal summoning the Alver here to make sure I get my Branded in red. I don't know, actually. Maybe I should have led with Branded Fusion. What would I have searched for? Or what would I have, what would I have fused for, rather? Some, anything that could have gotten rid of the map and or the eagle, and I could have maybe done a mirror and jade there. It's weird. I don't know. It would have been weird. Dragos Topelia, unfortunately, doesn't doing it. It doesn't doing it. It doesn't do it uh, because the negation effect of Impen, the one I really care about, is not an activated effect. It's a continuous effect. And Dragos Topelia's counter can only stop um, the activated effects of your opponent's cards. So. Plus, I misplayed here by summoning it in attack mode, so even if I wanted to use the effect, I, I couldn't here. Yeah, this super poly was a misplay in general. I, I misread the Mud Dragon. For some reason, I thought it was different attribute, or different... For some reason, I thought it was the other way around. The same type, different attribute. So I was going to try to get Rabina and M-Pen, but... Um, no, it's... it's I, I just misread it, so... Now here, I'm going to try to get the Agudo Mill. We're not, like, technically just done yet. Uh, but having to play through both Avion and M-Pen is going to be a bit rough here. Um, but what I'm thinking is, like, maybe I can still get away with making a defense mode Guardian Chimera with this Branded in red. And then we can... I want to try to get another monster on the field, though, to blow up two cards on the field. I'm just going to have to play through this Apex Avion. Uh, is going to be the real hard part here. But I think we can maybe proc it with the Branded Fusion and then try to do Branded in red next. Have I used my normal yet? I have already, okay. I shouldn't have done that super call. It was a huge misplay. Yeah, I just misremembered slash misread the, um, what is it called? The uh, conditions of Mud Dragon of the Swamp. Here my opponent makes a surprising play by tributing the M-Pen for a Ryza. Um, but yeah, that's definitely fine. It means we now only have the Apex Avian to play through. And now we can, like, potentially start putting our stuff in attack mode. Particularly this Brandon Red Guardian camera I'm still thinking about. Which I might do in response to the Ryza's effect here. Uh, I'm thinking about all this, um, and then of course adding back the Dramaturge as well, and then my opponent just concedes! Um, I think they realized that I could have used Brandon and Red to bring something back, fused with the Dramaturge, to summon not only the Guardian Chimera, but also the Dramaturge, and I still have a Branded Fusion, which I believe my opponent doesn't know about, so... Um, yeah, I think they misplayed, just maybe misclicked by sacking the M-Pen, because they still had the Token on their field, I think. I don't know. I don't know what happened there, but I guess, you know, we'll take it. I would have liked to have tried to play through this a little bit more to, like, you know, figure out the outs of this board. But at the same time, we do definitely still take these wins all the same. So that's going to go ahead and do it for this video. Thank you for watching all these games. Now let's go ahead and move on to our outro. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the very end of the video like this. That means a whole lot to me. Uh, not just personally, but it's also a great way of supporting the channel as well. If you're interested in supporting the channel in other means, uh, you can of course feel free to comment and or subscribe right here on YouTube. Uh, I'm always looking to the comments section. Uh, you guys leave some pretty awesome feedback uh, as far as like constructive criticism goes when it comes to deck building, gameplay, channel content, all that stuff. So feel free to leave your opinion down there. I will be sure to take a look at that there. 
Uh, and then subscribing is going to be the best way to get notifications of when these videos drop. That does happen every day, by the way, so if you're looking for daily Master Duel content, you've come to the right place. And there are more places where you can get some daily Master Duel content. If you check out the description below, follow the top link over to my Patreon page. Uh, there, for just five bucks a month, which is as much as you pay for a booster pack, uh, you'll find a lot more value in that pack full of filler over there. We've got some previews for content upcoming here on the channel. We've got some exclusive games uh, that are only posted over on Patreon over there. We've got some Q&As, and then you can also have your name featured in this lovely credit sequence where um, I thank all of the people who are uh, helping contribute over there on Patreon. Uh, it's a huge support to the channel, and it really means a lot as well. So thank you everyone who is donating uh, that is featured here on screen. And again, um, you know, it's not just a pure donation. You do get some more daily Master Duel content over there just for being a part of the Patreon. But I think that's about all the time that I have for today's video. Once again, I just want to thank you so, so very much for sticking all the way to the end of the video. Again, it just means a lot as I do um, put a decent amount of work into getting these videos out every single day. But that's about all the time that I've got for now. So without further ado, this is Xlex. I'm signing out, and I hope you have a fantastic day.